Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're going to be uh, we're going to be drinking Marvel Mystery Oil. I'm I'm kidding. Don't fucking do that. <laughs> um, so uh, we're working on the 2000 Suzuki Savage again. Uh, today, what I'm going to show you is the first step that I've started on this bike. Uh, I'm not going to go through and actually take the parts apart because I don't want to do it all over again right now. But I'm going to show you what you need in order to do. This video is going to cover, if you want to zoom in here, it's going to cover installation and removal of the bag guards, the directionals and the wiring, your backrest, your rear pinion. So basically, this assembly is kind of all one of a unit. Uh, say your, uh, your directionals are shot, you've tested the bulbs, the bulbs are fine, the wiring's fine, or maybe maybe just your stems are snapped off. And we're going to go look over here. These are the old original ones. And these had been snapped off prior. Dipshit McGee electrical taped them back. They still flash, but Dipshit McGee electrical taped them back on. They look bad. They might not pass inspection. They've been scratched up. You can see the scratches on there. This bike has definitely been dumped. You can tell generally if a bike has been dumped. The first things it's going to hit on a, a thin bike, if it's not the tank, are going to be the handlebars and the directionals. You look over here. Always check a bike if it's been dumped before you buy it. This was probably just dumped from a standing position on the tar or at low speed. So not a big deal. But... With that, these needed to be replaces. When I pulled these out, the guy actually had a twig, twigs, stuck inside here and then wrapped around with electrical tape. Yeah, that's not good. Don't cut corners with shit like that. So basically how these seat into the rear pillions is there's this piece, which is broken off, actually attaches here, slides into the pinion, and then from the bottom of the pinion, there's a, uh, a screw on the Phillips head, and it just basically unscrews and pulls out. However, given as to how it collects water in the pinion real nice, they like to be seized. They're a pain in the ass to get out. I would recommend, if you're going to take them out, get some penetrating oil. That's, never mind, that's... <laughs> PV Blaster. Decent stuff. You can use DOB 40 if you want, but it's better to have a penetrating oil, fluid film, or something like that. So basically, your first step, you're going to take off the seat. There's going to be two bolts on either side of the seat right underneath here that are going to come off. Your seat's going to lift up, pull back, and be your seat off. Those are your two bolts. This step you don't need to do necessarily, it may make it easier. You've got a single single screw here, a bolt, uh, that will pull off. That pulls the rear seat up and out. Uh, your next step is going to be you have two bolts here passing through the back of the fender into here. And then so this secures the pinion onto the fender. Uh, I don't have the size on here. A lot of the stuff is 8 millimeter bolts passing through here. Um, attaching this onto here, you have six 8 millimeter short bolts. I don't have the dimensions for those either, but they bolt in from the back. There's two here, and there's one underneath keeping it from coming up and down. Um, your back support struts also hold this onto the fender, the pinion onto the fender. Uh, there's two more 8mm bolts that are a little bit longer uh, that pass from the back of the fender. When you're mounting that, if you're mounting a new kit, if the kits do not come with them, always get washers. Because if you don't and you tighten them down, you're going to crack your paint and you're going to crack the fender if you get a fiberglass fender as opposed to a metal one. So basically, once you get all these bolts taken off, there's two here and the two on the back if you have these. On both sides, this will lift up. You don't necessarily have to take the backrest assembly off of here to replace the directionals, but you can if it makes it easier. So uh, with the old ones, like I said, basically it just passes through the uh, cylindrical hole, and on the bottom here is where 
your screw would screw in. Now if you can't get those out or if you're going to use aftermarket ones that are maybe not the exact same size, you'll have to get funky with it and do a little bit of different stuff. Um, with directionals, as far as directional go, um, the original ones, if you're going to buy the original ones for this bike, they're about $70 for a single one of these OEM part. I would highly recommend going on eBay or Amazon or something. Just get the Chinese knockoff if you're doing it on a cheap bike project. Don't waste your time with certain things like that. It's like $20 for both sides for a, a Chinese version that's pretty much identical. They're both plastic. They're both shitty. They are what they are. So you can go with that version if you want to replace them. If you don't have that, if you're just going down to your local bike shop or something, and you just have these uh, these little cheap, shitty ones here, uh, you can do that. However, ones like this on the back end is basically, it's just, it's a threaded bolt attached to this stem. It's going to thread through the hole, and there's going to be a, a split washer to tighten it down, and a regular washer on the end, or nut, I should say, that will tighten that down. That technically is meant for a fender mount. Can you use it on this? Yes. If it's the right diameter and if your your directional does not ground through the pinion because uh, the other the other issues you could have with it potentially which we did have a little bit with this is there is going to be a gap in between the fender and the pinion which you can see to hold your wiring and also it's risen up in the holes that with the mounting bolts. Um, if you get one that's too long, the wires are going to get crushed, and this is going to scratch up your paint, which is what the gentleman did here in this case, which is me. Anyways, uh, I don't give a shit, so I did it anyways. But the proper way would be to get the original ones, or the original style, I should say, that only go to here, right to the end, and then they screw in through the bottom. So you can do it with the cheap old ones if you really want. I just like the style, these smaller ones, that's why I put them on. But it makes it a little more of a pain. So basically, once you get the ones out, you're going to tighten those down, get your wires through. With the wiring, you have two sets of separate wires that come off your wiring harness. You have a right and a left. Uh, connect them up. Make sure when you take the old ones out that you know which side is to which. Uh, it may be a little bit more difficult to figure out. Uh, if you've jumbled them up, you can just put the wires together, turn the ignition on at least, and you know use the directionals to figure out which side is which. Um, so these connections here are going to be your pin style connections. I would uh, recommend keeping the ones here. If you have enough slack, however, from the uh, directionals and from the wiring, I would recommend that uh, you cut off the connections that are like this at the halfway point. Reason being for that, this is a very small gap with certain other metric bikes as well as this one, and you might not be able to fit those big insulated uh, plug-in style into there. So what I would do is I'd get the flat plug-in style that slide into each other. You can get insulated ones or non-insulated ones. If you don't have enough space, I'd recommend getting non-insulated ones, and then once your connection is tight and you got them together, tape it with electrical tape or shrink wrap it uh, with a torch. That way you can fit it in between this to hide the wiring nice and seamless. Uh, with the larger ones, some of the larger ones might not fit through this crevice. You could get it to fit on the back side of this, but you have to have it set like that when you bolt down the pinions into the fender, otherwise you might not be able to push them in afterwards if you're going to do this last. Uh, with the wiring, this is a simple two wire setup. On some metric bikes, you'll have just a single wire and it may ground through a metal piece on the body, such as this pinion, such as uh, somewhere else on the rear. Um, simple wire, this one is a, a, a black and white coming to the end, and uh, a black Black and white's probably your hot, just match them up together. Your black and white to your black and white on the directionals. Simple as that. Get your connections tight, put them in through there. Um, I get this all the time. People say, Brian, Brian, my, uh, my rear running lights don't work. I look at them and say, well, 
Did your motorcycle have running lights beforehand? Do you know that? When you bought your bike? I said, well, maybe, maybe not. I don't, I don't really know. I just got the bike. Here's the deal. A lot of these smaller metric cruisers, they don't have running lights in the back. They never did. These directionals here on this other bike out there are just directionals. There is, there's nothing in the wiring for, unless you're going to add wiring in for that, they will not glow like your front ones will. So with that, make sure that your bike first hand actually has running lights and it's actually set up and wired that way. If not, you, I mean, that, there's your, uh, there could be something else wrong with it. Probably with the wiring, you could have a burnt out filament. Keep in mind, ones with running lights, sometimes they'll have two different filaments, not necessarily the same one. Uh, your self-canceling mechanism could be screwed up. Uh, with the with the ground wire and the switch or something, uh, the switches you could have a loose broken wire, uh, a number of different things. We'll do a troubleshooting video for that at some point. But just make sure you know what your equipment is and you know how stuff goes. Try to use uh, the parts that you're going to use that are going to be if they're not OEM. Try to get replacement parts that are identical. Try not to take stuff like this and jerry rig it and make your bike look like shit like this and you know you know what I'm saying <laughs> so uh, that's basically how to take these apart uh, it's it's pretty simple if you can't do it then uh, fuck you I guess <laughs> um, no not fuck you yeah not fuck you get someone We're to help, to help you. people out anyways so uh, that's pretty easy if you got any questions on that leave a comment We'll show you how to do it. We'll actually do another video. We'll take this stuff apart. Um, next thing we're probably going to get going on is the engine. Um, and we're probably going to lift the bike up, pull stuff apart, and that'll be good.